Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. G. Marshall. If a man looks sharply and attentively, he shall see his fortune. For though fortune is blind, she is not invisible. Which means what? That it is possible to espy the dimensions of one's fate. But isn't the future supposed to be a closed book? True. However, if you can find out where the book is, surely there must be a way to turn the pages. You took all the money from the banks before you killed her. I don't remember. What did you do with all that money? I don't remember. Try. I don't want to remember. drama To Be a Rose was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Leon Janney. It is sponsored in part by x lax and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. What does she see in him? What does he see in her? These are questions that have enlivened countless discussions since I suppose men and women first discovered each other. The whole problem has to do with love. The fact is, we really do not know what love is. Is it mystery? Is the whole business an illusion? There are those who have given their very lives for it. Would you like to meet Curly Quentin? If only we could meet Curly Quentin. I'm afraid Mr. Quentin will be unable to see you now. Visiting hours are from two to four. We enforce this rule strictly. We make no exceptions for anybody. Good morning, Curly. I don't know if it's a good morning, nurse. Well, you can look out your window and see the sun. I don't mean nothing, ma'am. It doesn't. No. Seeing the sun's one thing. I don't tell you the truth. It's being outside. I'm feeling it. Well, you'll be able to go outside soon. How soon? Well, that depends on you. What you got there? You know, your medicine. I'm not going to take it anymore. Now, Curly. I don't mean to swallow any more of them pills. Now, Curly. I don't care what you're saying, nurse. You know what's going to happen. You do, Curly. I'll have to call Robert and Jerry Lee. Now, you know they're very strong. They'll strap you down and you'll have to take a needle. Now, you don't like that, do you? No, ma'am. Not a bit. Well, then just swallow these pills. No, ma'am. Curly! You see, if I just meekly take them pills, it means I agree that you're right and I'm wrong. Curly, why don't you just save everybody a lot of trouble? No, I have to fight you. All right, you ask for it. Robert, get Jerry Lee and come in here, will you please? They come into the room. Robert and Jerry Lee. They are big and strong. Now, Curly, one more chance to see reason. But the minute they walk inside, I just suck Jerry Lee in the jaw. It means nothing to him. You might just as well hit an elephant with a fly swatter. They both grab me, and they wrestle me down on the bed. They hold me still. It's like being jammed into a monstrous vice. I can't move a muscle. Then there's the sharp stinging pain of the needle. That's good. And then... That's fine, boys. And then everything goes numb. I just lay there thinking, trying to think. But everything gets blurry. 
blank. And I, I fall, fall along. Curly, are you awake? Yes, nurse. You've got a visitor. Uh, a visitor? It's, it has to be. Pammy Sue. Pammy Sue. No, Curly, you know it can't possibly be Pammy Sue. She found out. She found out where I am. And now that she knows nothing in this world or the next could keep her away. Curly, it isn't Pammy Sue. Well, then, then, then it's Jackie Thorpe. You see, Pammy's still on the road. And Jackie... It's is... your mother. My... My mother? Mama? Do you want to see your mother? Mama, oh, Lord. It's Mama. Everything's going to be all right now. Mama's going to make everything all right. Oh, how I prayed for Mama to come. Mama, Mama, how'd you ever find me? Son, I... I, I I'm so glad you're here. Now, son, please... You please. don't know what they've done to me. They shut me up in this place. Look, they, they, they got bars on the windows. I know, son, I know. And, and you know what they're saying? What terrible lies they're saying? They're saying I killed Pammy Sue. Son, just listen to me for a minute. How could I kill Pammy Sue? She's my wife. I love her. Jackie Thorpe, he's my best friend. Everything's going to be all right. Mama, Mama, you must help me to get out of here. They took away my clothes, but you bring some in. And you have my car parked right out in the street. Son, I can't do that. You mean you're going to let me stay here? You killed them. You killed the two of them. No. Yes, and you got to face it. Well, why? Why would I kill them? Because the two of them, they made a fool out of you. But don't you say that, Mama. It's the truth. It's a lie. And everybody knew it. Everybody but you. You didn't like her. You never liked her. You hated her. Oh, son. I didn't. You never wanted me to get married. I wanted you to get married, but not to her. Oh, no. No, Mama. You didn't want me to get married to anybody. You never wanted me to grow up. Son, that isn't true. Yes. Because as long as I was a little boy, you could still be a young girl. A pretty young girl. But once I became a man and had young ones of my own... You became an old lady, a, a, a grandma. You're no longer the prettiest gal in Lawton County. Son, I want to help you. You hated them all. All the gals I ever looked at. The Pammy Sue. She's the one you hated the most. I didn't hate Pammy Sue. Then why'd you say I must marry her? Because I could foresee a day like this one. Because I knew a thing like this would happen. Oh, son, you must face it. Everybody knows what they've both done to you. Oh, Mama, have I lost you, too? Does anybody believe I'm innocent? Please believe me. Help me. I want to help you, son. The only way I can, the right way. Let's kneel together and pray together and... Ask for forgiveness and mercy. My name is Elwood Clinton, but everybody calls me Curly. It's because I got no more hair on my head than a billiard ball. Ever since I can remember, I, I like poetry. I mean, I love to make up poems. I see something and off I go. Bright and early every morn, the sparrow comes and steals my corn. And I stand by and let it be, for God is feeding him to me. I guess, I guess it's the poems that brought me and Pammy Sue together. One day, while I was counting the bottom acres, I saw this little old car pull off the road and onto the edge of the field. Hi. Are you Elwood Quentin? Yeah. 
I'm Pammy Sue Pookit. <laughs> I know. Do you? Everyone knows who Pammy Sue Puckett is. Really? Who is she? The prettiest girl in town. Well, I suppose that's true. But then again, it's not much of a town. Uh, can, can I do something for you? Recite some of your poetry. What do you mean? You do write poetry, don't you? Who told you? I'm the new editor of the Lawrence and Courier and Blade. I know everything. Well, why would you want to hear my poetry? Because I'm told it's very good. We're trying to introduce a little culture in the Courier, and we'll pay you $5 for each poem. I don't think a person should be paid anything at all for writing a poem. You don't? No. Why not? It's, it's a, a gift. It surely is. A poem is a song, and the Lord puts it into your heart so that you can sing it and make everyone happy. Do birds get paid to sing? No, not yet. But one day someone will come around and start to organize them. You want to print my poems in the paper? If they're as good as people tell me. <laughs> You'll have to fix some fences today, son. I already tended to it yesterday, Mom. You did? Yeah. Wanted to get out of the way. I ain't going to town this afternoon. Any special reason? Uh, I think I will have some more pancakes. Why are you going into town? Are there any more blueberry preserves? Is there something you have to do in town? Mm-hmm. This is the best buttermilk. When you see Miss Pammy Sue Puckett, don't give her my regards. Why do you think I'm going to see Pammy Sue Puckett? Are you saying you're not going to see her? I am going to see her. But that's only because I'm bringing her a poem for the paper. Miss Pammy Sue Puckett's out to become Miss Pammy Sue Quentin. Nah, nah. What would she want with me? She's wrong for you, son. She's a city girl. She's learned them free and easy ways. Mama, you should see the fellas who are after her. All of them good looking and with money. I don't care who's after her. You're the one she's after. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Puckett. Hello there, Mr. Clinton. It's here, here, here's a poem, Miss Bucket. Thank you, Mr. Quentin. I can't tell you how much I enjoy reading your poems. Oh, oh, thank you. Mr. Hawk, our publisher, he enjoys them too. Matter of fact, he says we should pay $10 a piece for them from now on. Well, that's, that's really very nice of him. Do you know something, Mr. Quentin? What's that, Miss Bucket? I love you. You, you, why, 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 why should, should you love me? Why? Look at me. I'm looking. I'm, I'm bald-headed. That's a fact. I'm a homely person. That's true. I ain't rich. I know it. Well, then, how, how... How could you be in love with me? You know something? I've been asking myself that very question. You have? Yes. Well, have you come up with the answer? Yes, I believe so. I love you, Elwood Quentin, because you have a beautiful soul. I love you because you have a beautiful soul. Is that bad? Is it better to love someone because he or she has a beautiful body? I know that the cynical among you will surely suspect any high-minded motives. Well, drama requires suspension of belief for a little while, anyhow. Maybe for the short space of time that must elapse between now and Act Two. If a girl says, I love you to a handsome athlete, her statement is accepted without question. However, eyebrows do get raised when she says, I love you, to a homely poet. What does this tell us about the cultural level of our society? Don't ask me. All I do is tell stories. And this is the story of Pammy Sue Puckett and Elwood Curly Quentin. 
beauty and the beast. Good morning, Connie. Yes, ma'am. I've got your medications here. I see, ma'am. I also got Robert and Jerry Lee with me, in case you're inclined to create a fuss. Yes, ma'am. So, what'll it be? The easy way or the hard way? I refuse to take my medicine, ma'am. All right, boys. You heard him. This is the way it goes every morning. The way it has to go. I have to fight him. I can't give an inch. They're trying to make me believe that I killed Pammy Sue and Jackie Thor. And so Robert and Jerry Lee have to beat me down and... and hold me still till she jabs the needle. Oh. He'll be all right now, boys. It's a fire there. And it seems to me she talks to me. The nurse talks to me. Sometimes it's the nurse. Sometimes it's Tammy Sue or, or Jackie Thorpe or, or Mama. Curly? I think it's the nurse this time. Curly? I ain't gonna answer. They can't make me answer. No power on earth can make me answer. Curly, I want to help you. <laughs> you don't want to help me. You killed her and him. Now, why don't you confess it? It's best to say nothing. This woman simply won't understand. You will stay here for the rest of your life. You'll never again breathe the sweet air of freedom. Remember that, Curly? The sweet air of freedom? It's from that poem you wrote. The sweet air of freedom that blows in the hills. No. No, I didn't kill him. Curly. Curly, you're talking to me. You can fool the police, you can fool the doctors, but I know it's an act. No. Why do you think she married you? <laughs> For your look, please. For your money. You've been talking to Mama. Well, who knows better than Mama? The poems, Curly. The poems. Yes, yeah, she loved the poems. And the poems are part of me, a part of my soul. She loved the poems because she knew they would make money. Money? Oh, you're, you're crazy. No, you're crazy. Hmm. That's why you're in here. I want to help you get out. Money? I would only write one or two, no more than three a month. What'd I get? Ten dollars a piece. Well, that again, it wasn't one seven fifty. That money? Yeah, what I own? Three hundred and fifty acres that I had to share with Mama and my four brothers. Money? Now relax, Curly. You're fighting the medication. Relax. Don't tell lies about Pammy Sue. Don't you dare tell lies. It's all been in the papers. The papers lie. Is Jenny Thorpe lying? Jackie's wife? Jenny? <laughs> it ain't true. It's the story she told the reporters. I, I, I don't care. Here. It's in the paper. I'll read it to you. I don't want to hear it. Listen. One afternoon, my husband came home. It's a lie. Jackie, I saw you in Belucci's this afternoon. Oh, really, Jenny? Why don't you come over? Well, you were having such a delightful tete-a-tete with this ravishing blonde. Ah, uh, it was strictly business. Uh, nice. A little cotton fed. Do you know what I mean? It's an old college friend. Oh, hey. Did she go to college? Yep. Yeah, graduated. Summa cum laude. Okay. I'll play straight, man. Tell me what she majored in. The, uh, romantic poets. <laughs> No comment. Oh, no, she's editor of a backwoods newspaper somewhere, and, uh, well, she needs an agent. Okay, Jackie. No, oh, not for herself. For her husband. Oh, what does friend husband do? His poet. I didn't know you represent poets. <laughs> I'll try anything once. Yes. <laughs> well, she lent me some of his poems. Here, read. No, I'd rather not. Read, and tell me if I'm crazy. Uh, you're crazy as it is. Well, you just read. What do I know about poetry? Uh, read. All right. I'll read. He's six feet five inches tall. Then why don't you sell him to a basketball team? No, no, he's too small. Will you just keep reading? 
Now he's thin as a rail. He's bald as a baby's backside. He's got an Adam's apple on him that looks like a uh, half a watermelon stuck in his mm, throat. Aside from that, he's very good looking. I'll bet. Mm, what? Just read. Mm. Oh, I can see it. I can see thousands of kids crowding into college gyms, filling all kinds of stadiums. <laughs> this is the poet of the people. Wait, wait, hmm? wait a minute. You know something? Some of this isn't really bad. Yeah. And there's something in the way he reads it. Now, here, she left me a cassette. Yeah, I want you to listen. Bright and early every morn, the sparrow comes and steals my corn. And I stand by and let it be. For God is feeding him through me. Well? You know... I think you've got something, Jackie. <laughs> properly packaged, properly promoted, this is a million-dollar property. I don't believe it. I, I, I don't believe it. Look, look, the date of the newspaper. When did it happen? In March, a month before you married Pammy Sue. Pammy Sue was making sure Pammy Sue wasn't going to trust her own judgment. I wish they'd let me alone. I wish they'd all let me alone. The police, the doctors, the nurse. Mama, Jenny Thorpe. Pammy Sue and Jackie, I didn't kill them. They ain't dead. They just ran off together. Surprised to see me. Oh, come in. You're too busy to visit your mama, so I figured I'd better come up to New York myself. Fella downstairs dressed like a general wasn't going to let me come in. <laughs> He's a doorman. Where's Pammy Sue? Oh, she's on the road. Meaning what? Well, I, I give these readings, you know. Yeah? Well, somebody's got to go out ahead. You know, make the arrangements for the hall and the tickets and the uh, publicity and so forth. Why ain't this uh, Jackie Thorpe taking care of that? Oh, he needs all the help he can get. I see. So, instead of staying home and having a baby and keeping house and cooking meals for her husband like a decent, God-fearing wife, she's flitting all around the countryside with Mr. Jackie Thorpe. Mama, that's a kind of... Extreme attitude. It's all we got in this world, son. Good on the one extreme and evil on the other. And there really ain't nothing worth talking about in between. How does Mrs. Jackie Thorpe take to all this? Oh, oh, oh. she's one of them liberated women. And how do you look upon it? Pammy Sue's my wife and Jackie Thorpe's my friend. Been writing any poems lately? Lately? Well, uh, no. Ain't you feeling good? Hmm? Back home, the only time you wouldn't be writing is if you were sick. Well, Mama, Pammy Sue and Jackie, they say that the objective is to maximize the existing product. I don't know what that means, but I sure don't agree with it. Oh, excuse me, Mama. Oh? I uh, have a uh, curly. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh -huh, oh, Jenny. Uh, remember you have this date at four. Oh, I clean forgot. Yes, I figured you would. Uh, I'll be by to pick you up. Yeah, but, 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 I, I don't know what all to, to say on the TV. I'll tell you what to say. But listen. Now, wear a checkered shirt and denim pants. Why? Because it looks, well, you know, the farmery. But I'm not going out on a tractor. You should always look as if you just got off a tractor. And have that big red bandana kerchief. Now, I'll be by in 15 minutes. I see. You, uh, what do you see? Pammy Sue goes on the road to take care of Jackie Thorpe, and Jenny Thorpe stays home to take care of you. We didn't that way at all. Why don't you come home? Oh, no, Mama, Mama, you, you, you got to excuse me. I have got to get ready for this TV show. You don't know what this appearance is going to do for my career. Why don't you come home? I can't. Why not, Elwood? Why not? I wouldn't care if you was happy, but you're not. Admit it. You're not. Oh, I, I... I'm not. Then come home. Come home. 
I ain't written a new poem in a year. Then come home. I can't. I've been I've been corrupted, Mama. My heart used to beat faster after I'd write a poem. But now now I'll be on that T V program and and the host will say our special guest is the poet of the people. He has come down from the mountains to give us a breath of the sweet air of freedom. Rejoice with Curly Quentin and feel at one with nature and the harmony of the universe. And just what does all that mean? It don't matter. But I can feel the people reaching out to me. A chill goes down my spine. And the applause, oh, mama, there can't be sweeter music even in heaven. Come home, son, before it's too late. I can't, mama. I can't. Six ninety East Fifty Fourth Street, please, driver. And then I'll go on to Seventy Second Street. Uh, you come up with Street. me. Uh, Jackie isn't home. Oh, but Jenny, oh, darling, you were marvelous. Your career has taken on an entire new dimension. Uh, Curly. Yeah. Put your arm around me. Huh? Oh, whoa. Well, what? What's the matter? Don't you want to? <laughs> Why? Because it's the first step. Well, Jenny, I, I, I... Uh, you, uh, you know something, Curly. You and I, we're overdue. Overdue? For what? Oh, darling, don't carry it too far. After all, no one can be that much of an apple knocker. Don't like nature. Human nature. I'm a married man. Well, I'm a married woman. Your husband, Jackie Thorpe, is my friend. And Ace Sue Quentin is my friend. That's the thought. So what? So what do you think Pammy, Sue, and Jackie are doing right now? It's, uh, what, 530. Well, they're having cocktails. And they'll go out to dinner. They'll take in a show, and then... Pammy, Sue, Jackie? Why, why, they wouldn't... They wouldn't? Why wouldn't they? Why? I don't believe it. And do you know what else? Pammy, Sue, and Jackie are totally convinced that we are spending the evening the same way. It's a lie. It's a lie. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. Have the driver take us to LaGuardia Airport, and we'll get on the next plane to Chicago. We'll go to the hotel, and we'll see for ourselves at first hand what the arrangements are. Uh I can't believe that. <laughs> Obviously, you have to learn things the hard way. It, it, tap on the glass and tell the driver to take us to the airport. Well, I'm waiting. <laughs> I guess we're all waiting, but we'll have to keep waiting for Act 3. Then it will be all sorted out. It seems we live in times when people talk about meaningful relationships and alternate lifestyles. Some of it sounds very good, but the fact is that in the end, somebody has to get left. If it's all a game, folks, then everybody can't be a winner. The score will be posted when I return shortly with Act Three. There are many writers and artists and composers who were born and bred in the big cities, but a great number are country boys. Had they stayed at home, they would have remained field hands, store clerks. It would have been early to bed and early to rise, and Ben Franklin to the contrary notwithstanding. They may have become healthy and wise, but wealthy? Never. Most of the country boys who come to the big town soon become city boys. But Curly Quentin? Oh, no. Confess, my son, confess. It'll clear your mind. And your mama will take care of you. Curly, darling, listen to me. Your career hasn't even started. You've already made thousands of dollars, but this is just the appetizer. The first course. The real banquet hasn't even begun. You and I, 
You'll be married, and I'll take such wonderful care of you. You can tell me the truth, Curly. You can tell me, because I know it. I know you, Curly. I know you better than anybody else does. Let me take care of you. Not just for now, but later, when they let you out of here. You'll be a free man, and I'll take great care of you. And you'll also take care of the money, all of you. There's the money, the money to sign it, the money. That's what every one of you is after. That's all any of you ever wanted from me. What did you do with all the money, Curly? The, uh, the money? Now, Curly, the day before you did it, you went to all the banks and withdrew all the money. What did you do with it? I don't remember. Well, try to remember. I don't want to remember. I don't want to. Now, relax, Curly. You're fighting it. You're fighting the medication. Now, just breathe deeply. Relax. Now, Curly, you want to breathe the sweet air of freedom. Listen, the sweet air of freedom that blows in the hills. The sweet air of freedom. Now, confess. Say, yes, I did it. I had to do it. I'm a man of flesh and blood. She betrayed me. No. No, Pammy Sue. You don't know how much she loved me. You don't know. That girl was so filled with love. No, that she was. But it was love for the almighty dollar. Don't listen to Mama. That's all Mama could say. You should have listened to Mama. <laughs> Listen to me, son. No, I won't hear a word against her. You don't know Pammy Sue like I do. She has a heart of gold. She surely does. It's all gold. Hard, cold gold. And that's all she can ever think about. Gold. That's all she can love. No, Mama. She loves me. Is that a fact? Look in the mirror. Go ahead and look. Answer me. How could she love you? <laughs> Your mama's right, Curly. That's why Pammy Sue married you. For fame and fortune. You don't know. How can you know any of you? How could you know what it was like when Pammy Sue and me were alone? Only I know. Only I know. I love you because you're beautiful. You have a beautiful soul. <laughs> you can't see a person's soul. Oh, yes. It shines out of him. But you are really beautiful. I know, but I'm beautiful where it can't last. Don't say that. You'll be beautiful till the day you die. So will you, Pammy Sue. So will you. No. Long before that time it'll all have gone. All the beauty... Remember what you wrote? It was the poem that upped your rate from seven fifty to ten dollars. Mr. Hawk liked it that much. The rose, so lovely at the dawning, keeps its beauty for the morning. It fades beneath the midday sun. At evening time, its life is done. Remember that poem? How can I forget it? It's my poem. Remember what it means. I know what it means. Tell me. The life of a rose is very short. Beauty dies quickly. Yes. Yes, I guess so. And because a rose cannot live long, it... What? It... It gives its pollen freely. I'm not sure I understand. What are you saying? <sighs> Nothing. I just want you to know I love you. Curly, accept it. You kill him. Now, nothing's going to happen to you. Nothing. You don't have to believe me. I brought in this TV set. There's the big meeting being held in Madison Square Garden in New York City. Now, everybody is behind you, Curly. Everybody. I'll turn it on. Now, now, look. 
and listen. Okay. Okay, I know how you feel. Let's all quiet down. You see? It's Marty Donder, one of the biggest stars in TV. He's jamming up in this thing. So we're 100% behind Curly Quentin Rally. We are here to show that the world is 100% behind Curly Quentin, a man who was most shamefully betrayed by the two people he loved and trusted most, his wife and his friend. Is it any wonder his mind has broken under the terrible weight of it all? Curly, get well. The world will understand and forgive. No jury in America would ever condemn you. Oh, get well, Curly, and come back to us. You heard the man? That's what they're saying. All over the country they're saying it and writing it. Curly, come back to the world. You're not fooling me, Curly. I've been in this business too long. Now, I know you killed him. That's a lie. I didn't. They, they, they're still alive. Why do you want to pretend? Do you want to stay here for the rest of your life? Oh, come back into the real world. I'll help you. And you can tell me where the money is hidden. No, no. I have to wait here for Pammy Sue. Pammy Sue is dead. You killed her. Your doorman remembers calling the cab. The cab driver remembers taking you to the hotel. The elevator man remembers taking you to the floor. And the man in the store remembers selling you the gun. Curly. Yes, Curly. Uh, uh, Pammy and me, we, we, we couldn't help ourselves. What, uh, what are you going to do with that gun? Please, C Curly. You first, Jackie. No, no, Curly. My name is Elwood. Oh. oh. You, you killed him. Yes. Uh, are you going to kill me, too? Yes. Why? Because you broke my heart. No, Curly, don't. Let me live. I can't. You lied to me. You said you loved me. I do. Why couldn't you let me alone? You were so beautiful. I was happy just to look at you, just to dream of you. I, I could have stayed where I was. Why did you take me away from the sweet air of freedom that grows in the hills? Don't kill me, please. I want to live. You kill me, Pammy Sue. I'll never breathe that air again. No. Pammy Sue. Pammy Sue. Why? Did you shoot me? Well, I, I, I had to. Why? I, I'd have done it soon enough. Anyhow. I'm sorry. I, I'd have died soon enough. You... You wrote that poem. It, it was about me. The, the poem? Uh, the rose, so lovely at the dawning, keeps its beauty for the morning. It fades beneath the midday sun. At evening time, its life is done. You wrote that for me. I asked you if you knew what it meant. And you said you did. But you didn't. I, I, I did. I do. No. You can write about a rose, but you, you don't know what it is to be a rose. Only I know. You, you, you'll be all right. I'll, I, I'll get it done. No. I want you to listen, please. Well, I still have the strength to say it. Listen to me. Please. Uh, this is room 1602. Now, you got to hurry. You, you get a doctor, uh, an ambulance, the, the, the police. I know, because I'm a rose. Now, 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 don't you try to talk. Did you ever notice how so many bees buzz around the prettiest rose? Don't talk. No. She refuses none of them. Because she knows she must live for the moment. The moment is all she has. Now, but, Pammy Sue, I won't hear another word. I want you to hear my last word, Elwood. Thanks to you, I never lived to see my beauty fade away. I was beautiful till the day I died. Oh. Pammy? Pammy Sue? 
Absolutely to the point. Thou shalt not kill. It stands alone, unadorned. No ifs, buts, or maybes. No qualifying phrases. No escape clauses. This being so, why do so many spend so much time trying to figure ways around it? They don't exist. Our cast included Leon Janney, Catherine Byer, Joan Shea, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search box.